Hey Siri, how long does it take to get to MSP? Hey Siri, when do the Vikings play next? Hey Siri, how can I be more patient? Hey Siri, how can I be at peace? Hey Siri, how can I be a better parent? Hey Siri, who do I talk to about my regrets? Hey Siri, how do I forgive my brother? Hey Siri, why do I feel so insignificant? Hey Siri, why am I here? Hey Siri, how do I talk to God? Hey God. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I, I love what Leah said this morning when she opened up uh, just to say, it wouldn't be the same without you. And that, that is so true. Every single one of us bring our personality, our character, that, that we all come together and create an atmosphere. And I just thank every one of you for being here. And I welcome everybody who's watching us online. You are a part of us as well, maybe in a little different way, but you're connected to us by watching the messages online. It's great to have you join us. Uh, you know what, I got, I got a, a question for you today that's probably one of the most difficult questions you will ever be asked in your life. It's a question that's going to require you to think. It's going to cause you to ponder. It's going to... When I ask you this question, you're going to think you have an immediate answer, and then you're going to wonder about it. And you'll, It's like taking a test where your first answer, but then you go, gosh, and you're going to really think into it. And it's a pretty simple question. It's probably one of the simplest questions you'll ever be asked. And that is basically this. How are you? How are you today? How are you doing? I know that some of you are going through some incredible tough things. You are. And I just want to know how you're doing. Some of you, you're carrying so much stress. Uh, maybe you run a business, or maybe you just have, you're in charge of a bunch of stuff, and, and you're just, you're just kind of overwhelmed with, with how things are going. Uh, maybe some of you are just so deeply hurt. Maybe you're going through a divorce right now, maybe a relationship breakup, and you're just feeling so hurt. And maybe, maybe some of you, a worry is just overwhelming you. We're, you're just this worry about a conversation you had at, at work, or maybe that you're going to have a meeting next week, you know, about a, a meeting coming up that you're really, really stressed about, or maybe even over this weekend, your, your mind is going over and over again about how am I going to respond to what happened last week, how am I going to address that person, you know, and maybe all, you know, all of these things that are going on in our life. Uh, I know that many, many of us are really uncertain about the future. I know that if you, especially medical stuff, uh, some of you have loved ones that are, uh, you know, diagnosed with a disease and you don't know what's going to happen. Are they going to, you know, is it, is it going to be terminal? Are we going to get through it? How, are, how is that going to change life? And some of you, just all kinds of things. And here's the point. How are you? Because I think most of the things that are weighing us, most of the things that we carry, most of them, not all of them. Most of them have to do with either what happened yesterday or last week in the past or have something to do with the future. I want you to think about it. Most of the time, what's weighing us, what's heavy, what we're experiencing has everything to do with the past or the future. How much of what you're experiencing now has to do with now? It has to do with right now. Because I wonder sometimes, and I've, I've seen it and you've seen it so often, where people aren't enjoying today because they are so burdened with tomorrow or so grieved from yesterday that they can't enjoy today. We don't have that many days on this earth. 
to waste good days on the past or the future. And I know of people, matter of fact, one man comes to mind where the last 20, 25 years, he has literally lived in turmoil because of what people have done and what he thinks or where he thinks he should be if they wouldn't have. And he hasn't enjoyed any day since then. And my question to you is this. Are you missing out on life? Are you missing out enjoying? And how many precious days have you missed out on because of the past or the future and you haven't enjoyed today? Have you ever went on vacation with somebody who's a complainer? Okay, it's miserable. Don't do it. I went hunting one time with a guy who complained that it was either raining or it was snowing. It was too bright or it was too hot or it was too cold. Or Listen, it's miserable. You know what? Because here's the point. One time he was complaining, and it, he, he, I t- shared this story before. We were out in Colorado elk hunting, and he, he left me there. He, him and another guy, it was us three, and they left. They just had to go. It was miserable. It was terrible, you know, because it, it had snowed the night before. There's four inches of snow. We weren't prepared for that, and they just left, and they took my truck. I knew my dad was coming out, you know, a few days later, so I said, go home, go home. I'm not going home. Do you know why I'm not going home? Because I am in the Rocky Mountain West hunting elk. I'm not going to waste this opportunity because there's snow on the ground or because I'm not dressed for it. You know what? And I think that they missed this incredible experience because of something wasn't just right. And I wonder, how many days do we miss? How much life passes us by that we can't enjoy and we can't see our blessings because we are either carrying the past we're looking forward to the future, and we're missing out on today. My son called me yesterday. And just remember, if you belong to my family, you are sermon material all the time, okay? <laughs> my son, Mikey, called me yesterday. Sorry, Mike, if you're here. And he said, Dad, I just wanted to talk. He said, I feel so overwhelmed. How oh, you do? What's, what's going on? He said, oh, man, I'm just overwhelmed. I got so many progress going and so many things happening. And he, he said, one of my trucks has broke down and it's going in the shop on Tuesday. Tranny's out of it. I got my kitchen tore apart at home. I got no cabinets, nothing in the, in the kitchen. And if I don't get that soon, my wife's leaving me. And okay. <laughs> Uh, that's just was reading between the lines, but you know, and, and it's, it's all this stuff, and it gets so so much money, and I, you know, of all this going on, and, and he said we're so busy, and I got to keep up with stuff, and he was just he was just kind of overwhelmed, you know, with with stuff, and so as we just talked, I said, but Mike, what can you do about any of that today? Oh, there you are, today. Your truck's going to get fixed on Tuesday. You got your cabinets ordered. You, what can you do about it? We are responsible to do what we can do. And we have to. But why ruin a great day on what we worry about in the future or what hanging on in the past and what can we do about it today? And we need to do... To, you and I can't... I just feel so bad that we lose days because of the past or the future and we miss today, and today can be a great day. And I stole this off of Michelle's wall, and she doesn't know that either, but uh, <laughs> Michelle Larson here at church, who, who does our counseling and our care ministry, I, I, I'm sure other people have said this, I've only heard this from her over and over again, and she's got this hanging in a wall, and it says this, it says, live in the moment. How many times have you and I missed a great day, a blessing from God, because we're not living in the moment. We're living in the past or we're living in the future because the moment is really good. Let me give you an example. Jeremy, our head usher, this morning, coming into church, coming in here. I said, how you doing? And he said said to me, he said, great. I said, you're doing great? He said, yeah. I said, why are you doing great? And he said, because it's a beautiful day outside and I'm in church. It's great. 
Now, does that mean he doesn't have any worries from last week or any hurts? No, not at all. Does that mean he doesn't have a lot to think about for the future and a lot of decisions to make? No, not at all. He was claiming, he was saying a statement from, I'm living in the moment and right now in my life, today is a good life, a good, a good day. Today is good. I am going to enjoy today. It doesn't, I might have stuff to deal with tomorrow, but how about, have you ever heard this? One day at a time. Just living one day at a time, enjoying that day. Because so much of our lives get tore up and ruined about our worry about what might not even happen and worrying about later. Matter of fact, Jesus, I love, he's a little bit of smart aleck here, but, but not totally, but I just love how he almost makes fun of us, but he hits this topic right on point. He says this, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life In other words, Jesus is saying, hey, listen, that you're worrying so much that you can't even enjoy a day I've given you. You can't even enjoy the friends around you. You can't enjoy this experience. That you're at church, that this is awesome. That you're so worried about the future that you can't enjoy today. And he kind of says this, and he said, and so what good is that worrying? Do you think by all that worrying you're going to add one little bit to your life? Do you think you can add a day to your life? Do you you think you can make things better by worrying and worrying? And Jesus is kind of making fun of us like, hey, if you think it's so good, you know, that your worrying is accomplishing much, see if you can even add a day to your life. And the point is you can't. As a matter of fact, we know that by worrying you will take days away from your life. The stress will shorten your life. So here we are. You know what? we're, We're so consumed with the past and so consumed with the future, then we're not enjoying the day, today, the experience, the vacation, the home. Oh, I wanted another home. So look at how nice you have it now. You know, I'm just, but here's the point, and I'm getting to this point is this. We all know we should do that, and we're all going to try harder after today. We're going to try to live in the moment. We're going to try to enjoy where we are, what we are, and enjoy what we have, and not Not let us be so consumed with the past or the future, but enjoy and live in the moment. But how do you do that? I mean, practically, how do you do that? There's real issues you're facing. I mean, there might be foreclosure. You're losing a piece of equipment. You know what? You don't know where your relationship's going to go. There's a lot of junk in our future. There's a lot of things we're uncertain about. There's a lot of hurts, and there's a lot of pain from the past. I mean, we know all that. So dealing with all of this, knowing that I have that it's so hurtful, I can't just forget about it, you know, and, and that, I got to think about it, I gotta, like, how, how can I do this? And this is where Jesus comes in. This is where Jesus gives us the most incredible advice, and he tells us this, that this is how you can live in the moment, how you can live, it's through prayer. Prayer will deal with the past, and will deal with the future, so we can appreciate now. This whole series, we're going through how Jesus taught his followers, taught us. Listen, this is the pattern in which you should pray. This is how you should pray. Not word for word, not this is what you should pray, but this is how you should pray and how you should approach our, our Father. And we're going through the Lord's Prayer, and, and it started with this. And each week we've covered one of these. So this, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, pray, Dad. He's a personal, loving father who cares about you. And holy is your name. You are God and you are holy. And he goes on and says, your kingdom come. Your will, not my will, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your wish, your desire for my life in heaven, I want that to happen. Not what I wish, not what I want, but I, I, I know you know best for me, and I want what you want to happen. I want your will to come about in my life, no matter what it is. And then we go on. He says, today he says, give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And right here is what Jesus is telling us. This this is the instruction of Jesus, how you and I can live in the moment, how you and I won't waste the few days that we have on this earth, worrying about the past, uh, taking on the past, worrying about the future. How you and I can live in the moment is just simply this, by talking to God this way every single day in our life, that this would be a part of our prayer to God every day in our life that we would say to him, give us Today, our daily bread. 
the first thing we do is we go to God and say, God, you are the giver of everything. Give me today. Do you know every good thing comes from God and sometimes we forget that? As a matter of fact, if you're here today and, and, and you're kind of like, I don't know where the whole God thing is, like people, you know, who, who are Jesus followers, they need a crutch, you know, they can't live life on their own, they can't do it. I do things on my own. I, I, re, I remember talking to a person about, about just giving, you know, uh, giving back to God, and his whole opinion was, what do you mean give back to God? God hasn't given me anything. I've worked for everything I have. I have worked hard. I have strived. I have done that. And we forget the fact, see... When we, when we rely on ourselves and we've gotten everything that we have, it's all up to us, what happens when something goes wrong with us? What happens when we can no longer perform? What happens? You know, that if our trust is in us, if we think we're the ones that have gotten us everything, then we should worry because guess what? You're going to fail sometime. You're going to fall short sometime. That we should worry. But the truth is that God gives us everything. Say, Father... You're the one who gives. Give to me today. I think sometimes we forget. I, I love that song we sang today. That you, it's your breath in my lungs. And sometimes, and I want to say this as gently as I can, but sometimes you and I, we can tend to get a little arrogant. We can tend to think more of ourselves than we should. Because sometimes we think we don't need God. God's the one that gives us air to breathe. It's his air. It, it's, it's his. And, and you know what? He could suck it all out today, and then we'll see how great we are. I'm serious. You know, if you're a farmer and you work hard, and I know that people, you know what? Hey, God, God's the one who made the dirt. It's his. It's not your dirt. You can, like, you know, use it for a while while you're alive. Somebody else is going to plant your dirt when you're dead, you know? <laughs> You're going to be planted in that dirt when you're dead, you know. Uh, hey, it's God's dirt. It's God's rain. It's, it's God's, God's the one who's given us the blood that's flowing through our body. God's the one that gives us intellect in our minds. And it's, God has given us everything. I, I just love this verse and so many verses surrounding it in Deuteronomy. It says this, You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Listen, especially as Americans, it's easy for us to think this, isn't it? Well, I'm the one that works, and we need to work hard. We have to be responsible. But let's not go too far and think that God's not the one that gives because we can get to a point where we think it's all about me. I've done this for myself. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. That what he's saying is this, and there's way more to this, and it's all about not forgetting God. But listen, be careful that we don't get to a place in our life where we think that we're the ones that produce everything for ourselves, that it's all about me. Remember, remember, in Jesus, every day when we pray, we say, Father, you're the giver of everything. You give me. Not without my work, but you give me. Continue to give me the ability to make wealth. Continue to give me the ability to think. Father, give, give me this. And then we got to go on to the next one. He says, give us today. Never does he say, hey, give us for the rest of my life. Just give it to me now so I can manage it forever. Father, give me what I need today. Tomorrow will be another day. It's this daily prayer that you and I can enjoy, we can live, we can experience every single day. Not be overwhelmed with the past, not be overwhelmed with the future, but live today by every day going to God and saying, Father God, you are the giver of everything. Give me today. One day. I'm not asking for next week. I don't know. I might be dead tomorrow. Jesus told a great story about that. You know what? I don't know. Father, I'm going to trust you tomorrow when tomorrow comes, and I'm going to trust you the next day when the next day comes. But I am asking you one day at a time, each and every day as I come to you, Father, give to me today the things that I need today. 
Today's got a lot of stress. Today's got a lot of stuff. And I'm asking you to work in my life today to give me what I need today. And then tomorrow, it will have a whole new bunch of stuff. And I'm going to ask you tomorrow, Father, one day at a time, I'm looking to you, Father, to provide for me today what I need today. One day at a time. I know that, again, as Americans, we like security. We want to make sure that we're set for life. This whole idea of retirement, hey, listen, it's something that I think about often. You know, it's like, well, I want security. I want security. I'm challenged all the time. Like, you know what? Nowhere in the Bible does God say that, that, you know, he's going to give us the rest of the time. As, As a matter of fact, God works with his people all the time in the past. He always works with them one day at a time. One day at a time, I'll be there for you tomorrow. Well, God, I don't know if I can trust you. I don't make sure I pile stuff up for tomorrow. I can't trust you because I need to like really make sure it's there. God will be there tomorrow. Just like God's there today. He will be there tomorrow. Now, it doesn't mean we shouldn't plan. It doesn't mean we shouldn't save. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be smart about it. But we shouldn't worry about it. We shouldn't have to make it happen tomorrow. One day at a time, we're responsible to say, God... Give me one day at a time. Give me one day at a time, my daily bread. This literally means bread. It means food. But we live in America. This doesn't mean the same to us as it meant when Jesus was teaching the people around him. For most of them, it was one day at a time. They didn't know what they were going to eat tomorrow until tomorrow came. They didn't have supermarkets so packed full of stuff like we do. We live in America. There's very few of us that are wondering what we're going to eat tomorrow. There there might be some, I don't know, but very few of us. But I think what Jesus was saying is not just literally bread, but and it can accurately be uh, taken as give us our daily needs. Give us our daily needs. God says he will. I believe him most of the time. Sometimes I doubt. Sometimes we doubt. But that's why we do this daily. We keep going to God every day. And we ask him, Father, Father, give me today what I need today. Because most of us, talking to my son yesterday, most of us have what we need today. Most of us. We have everything we need today. We're all stressed out about next year, next month, next week. But today, aren't we kind of fine, most of us? For the most part, we have what we need. Fulfilled. Say, Father, give me today what I need today. And I believe that in there we will find the peace of God and enjoy every day. I really believe, I don't want to say it's a secret, but I believe that this is what Jesus is leading us to. It's the whole idea that you and I can live every single day to the fullest. We can enjoy every day. We can appreciate every day. Will everything go perfect in a day? No, not at all. Things don't need to go perfect. That every day we approach God in prayer and say, Father, it's a new day. And I know that you're the one who gives everything. You give everything. Father, I'm asking you, give me today what I need today. And if you and I learn to look around, we're going to see that we're more blessed than we think we are because we have what we need today. We have all of those things and all that stuff. And if we don't have it, we ask God and he will give us today what we need today. I love how the Apostle Paul kind of taught us to pray. He says this. He's kind of instructions for all of us. And some of you remember this is a memory verse that we had a while back. He says, do not be anxious about anything. It's a tough one, isn't it? But we can do it. We can. You don't have to ruin today because you're anxious about tomorrow. You don't have to throw a good day away. Do not be anxious about every, anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, God, thank you for everything you've given me, and this is what I need today. Present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you and I are not anxious, but we bring everything to God and say, God, I need you to provide me today with my needs for today. We will have peace in our life. I gotta tell you a quick story. 
I've shared this story before, but uh, it's, it, was a, it was a life-changing event for me. I was uh, in my early 20s, mid, mid-20s, mid and uh, just didn't have much, right? Had married a couple kids and one just piece of junk car. The car didn't have any door skins on it. It was a $200 beater and uh, just really no money for anything. And I, I remember uh, listening to some preachers and people saying, well, you just, just got to believe God and talk positively and all that stuff, and God will give you whatever you want and kind of fell into that stuff. There's some error in some of that. And uh, so I was praying for a car, and anyway, I had a raffle ticket, bought this, uh, I'm going to get this car, and blah, blah, anyway, it didn't happen. I remember going outside of our trailer house, I looked up into the sky, and I said, in a pretty loud voice, I was angry, I said, God, what good are you? If you're not going to give me what I need when I need it, then forget you. I mean, I don't want nothing to do it. You know what? What good are you and all this junk about, you know, hey, oh, yeah, you're going to give me a car like three years from now. Sure, I don't need it three years from now. I need it now. So what good are you if you don't give me what I need today? I don't suggest doing that. But you know what? I grew from there and really learned a lot. Because even though I wanted a new car and our car was junk by anybody's standards, I look back And I've never been without a car. My family's never been without a car. We've always had a car. I can't look at God and say, honestly, what I said to him was, well, if you're not going to give us what we need, we didn't need a car. Did I want a car? Yeah. Did I want a nicer car? Absolutely. But we always had a car. God always provided for what we needed. He always did. It wasn't as nice as I wanted. It wasn't all that. But you know what? I look back now, and it was long, 25 years ago or longer. I look back at that now, and I think, I have never went one day without a car in my whole life. God is faithful. I was so worried about what I wanted, I missed what I had. I had a transportation. I had a car. We always got around. My family never went without. It never... Never, never was, oh, well, I guess we can't go to the grocery store today. We don't have a car. We always had one. And you know what? Sometimes our attitude for what we want, we don't appreciate what we have. And then we have no joy. For you and I to enjoy today and all of the great things about today and all of the blessings about today, we need to remember what Jesus taught us about praying. Give us today our daily bread. Father, my Father in heaven, give me today what I need for today. Tomorrow, I'll worry about tomorrow. But today, this is what I need. And you know, for most of us, for most of us, in order to have God's joy, here's what we need to pray. Father, Give me today what I really need. I need your peace. I need today, today, I need to have no worry. I need your peace. Today, I need your joy today. It'll run out by the end of the day, and tomorrow we pray the same thing. Father, today, I need you to give me your security that I am secure in you and that you are there every single day. You don't have to pile it up because I know you're going to be there tomorrow just like you were there yesterday. You will be there every day. And if you and I could learn to pray every day the way Jesus taught us to pray, Father, the giver of everything, give me today what I need. I need patience. I need forgiveness. I need healing today. That's what I need. Lord, I need to be loved today. God will give us our daily needs. He promises he will. What we need today, he will give us. If we ask him every single day, But I don't want to ask him every day. I want to ask him once for the week. 
We'll do it his way. Every day come to him and ask him. I want to close today with leading us in that example. And as we pray today, I want each one of you to just fill in the blank. And I'll give you an opportunity to do that. But let's pray. Father, I'm so glad that we can come to you and call you Father. Nobody loves us more than you. Nobody cares about us more than you. Nobody knows us more than you. And Lord, nobody sees the future better than you. You are a holy, awesome, amazing God. And we pray, Father, that your desire for each one of our lives would come about. I pray, Father, that, that what the perfect, your perfect will for my life, the things that you see are the best, I pray that nothing would hinder them from coming. Not me, not circumstances, nothing. And Father, you give everything. Everything good comes from you. And I ask you today, Father, to give me today what I need today. And just to yourself, just to God, just just tell God what you need today. You need healing. You need forgiveness. You need strength. You need a different perspective. You need forgiveness. Maybe you need a healing in your heart from a hurt that is so deep. Maybe you need assurance. Lord, I just need assurance. I need to feel loved by you. I need to know that I'm important to you. Father, I need to pay my bills today. Whatever is due on a Sunday, I don't know. If there's bills tomorrow, Father, I'm going to ask you about that. Father, I pray that you would give us today our daily needs. And I pray, Father, that as we approach you, that your joy and your fullness and the life you've given us, this special 24-hour period that you've given us to live, there's no guarantee about tomorrow, but today there's relationships to enjoy. There's life to live. There's people to serve. There's forgiveness to give. Lord, there's so much in today. May we make the best of today as a gift that you've given us, I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.